very diligent. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy um, Sabbath. I'll tell you a story about um, back in the year 2000. It's about a little over 20, almost 20 years ago. I was out west traveling with a friend, and we were in Arizona. And I was looking through my triple A guidebook for something exciting to do while we were on the road. And I came across a place called the Biosphere 2. According to the AAA guidebook, it was one of the 50 must-see wonders of the world. Uh, a 1987 article in a magazine called it the most exciting scientific project to be undertaken in the U.S. since President Kennedy launched us to the moon. Wow. So we got off the interstate. Now, Biosphere 2 is a state-of-the-art greenhouse that is located in a little north of Tucson, Arizona, on a little more than four, three acres of land. That is a giant computerized environment intended to be a miniature version of our biosphere, the Earth. It was completed in 1991 at the cost of over two million dollars. Now, this greenhouse included five wilderness areas. There was a rainforest, there was a desert, there was an ocean with a coral reef in it, there was a wetland that was modeled after our south, southern Florida area, and there was a savanna. And it was stocked with thousands of plants and animals. There was also an agricultural area that was supposed to be the most productive half acre ever developed that was going to grow food without the need of pesticides or uh, fertilizers. There was also a human habitat that was made to house up to 10 residents and supply their needs for privacy, work, and leisure. Now, the Biosphere 2 was a sealed system, and outside of it, there was two domes that were cons connected to the Biosphere by underground tunnels, and they were called lungs, basically, because as the heat would rise in the Arizona desert during the day, the air would expand and it would rush out through these tunnels to these domes, and the rubber membrane inside of it would rise to accommodate the air. And then as the air would cool in the evening, the air would rush back out of those lungs back into the the greenhouse, uh, if they did not have this, the, crack, the glass would crack. Now, there were four men and four women that went into this greenhouse to live for a period of two years. They were called biospheres. And they were completely cut off from the outside world except for communication with the scientists on the outside. Now, they were supposed to live in this bubble for this period of time, recycling, producing their own food, recycling their own waste, and drinking their recycled water. And the rest of the time was supposed to be spent uh, studying uh, the ecology of the system. Now, when this landlocked Noah's Ark embarked in 1991, it ran aground of a lot of unforeseen 
catastrophes. Uh, the first thing that seemed to go wrong is because of the atmospheric effect that the sun wasn't as bright as they anticipated, so the plants didn't grow as well. And that was because of cloud cover. Um, the plants didn't grow as well, they didn't produce as much food. Uh, the chickens didn't lay as many eggs as they expected. And the farm animals were eventually slaughtered because they were consuming more food than they were worth. Now, the oxygen levels inside the biosphere dropped. And they planted more plants. They even set up pots on the steps going up and down to the different levels to help produce more oxygen and to lower the carbon dioxide. And finally, the oxygen level got so low that they had to pump an emergency oxygen into the system, which violates the whole system plan. Uh, food production got low and the crew got so hungry they actually started stealing food from each other. Uh, nearly all the birds and animals that were in there died, except for the crazy ants and cockroaches. They seemed to be doing well. Anyway, after two years, the experiment was called to a halt, and the men and women left. They were much thinner, but actually much healthier. Um, their proud vision of making an utopia on Earth became a joke. Today, uh, visitors can tour the facility, but its main purpose now, as a property of the Arizona, uh, University of Arizona, is uh, as a research facility and a classroom for students of Earth sciences. sciences. Now, I find it interesting that there were four men and four women that entered into this bubble, just as there were four men and four women that entered Noah's Ark. Now, they were cut off from everything except for communication with scientists. But Noah was communicating with God. No, God caused all the animals to come into the ark, and the ark survived a long, long period of time with only them trusting in God to provide. Um, and when Noah's uh, time on the ark was ended, God spoke to Noah and said, Go out of the ark, you and your wife, your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing of all the flesh that is with you, birds, cattle, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply. So, Noah, depending on God to provide, he, his family, and all the animals survived. Someday soon, we will have an utopia on earth again. When our Lord Jesus returns, it will be even restored. And it will be as it was before the fall of mankind. There will be no need for stealing food. There will be no death. The air will be pure. And we will live forever. Praising an awesome, powerful, and most importantly, a forgiving and loving God. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for everything that you give us. And we stand in wonder of your awesome ways, Lord, that 
you're going to produce such a perfect world for us, Lord. Lord, we thank you for that, and we thank you and we praise you for your precious Son. Amen.